for revision. So they revised it. So they threw out, leave out the word begotten. You were going to the Greek scriptures. Hmm, I don't know Greek. But the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, the bedrock of Christendom, Christianity, because what is the dispute? We say God is one, he say God is one. But they say that God is a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So we are at variance. We are at variance. Now that verse in the Trinity is the only place in this Bible. I don't know whether it is in his Bible, the Greek. He didn't say which version he's holding. But the bulk of Christendom, this is the one they have in their hands. And the verse is in first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And it is thrown out as a fabrication, out of the RSV, by your scholars. So that's a version. It's thrown out as a fabrication, adulteration. Then the ascension of Jesus. The only places in the Gospels where it occur is... Mark chapter 16, verse 19, that he ascended into heaven. Luke chapter 24, verse 51, that he ascended into heaven. They are also thrown out as fabrications. Now, that is version. You see, this is not saying that the translation. It's not translation. Things that were supposed to be not there, they threw it out. And honesty demands that you do. So that is the difference between a version and a translation. <laughs> Dr. Douglas. Do you believe the Old Testament to be the whole of the Word of God? If your answer is yes, do you say that Jesus was cursed because he was hanged to death? I'm sorry, let me repeat the question because I thought I misunderstood it. Do you believe in the Old Testament to be the whole Word of God? Yes, I believe the Old Testament to be the Word of God. I do not believe it to be the totality of the Word of God. But that, I, as I see the question, is, is not what's being asked. If your answer is yes, which it is, do you say that Jesus was cursed because he was hanged to death, as the Old Testament said? The New Testament definitely says Jesus was crucified or was hanged. And from the perspective of the Jews, yes, he was cursed. He became a curse for you and me. In effect, taking the curse of sin and the punishment for sin upon himself. It's not that the Christian comes along and says a curse on Jesus. It says that the Christian says, or I as a Christian say, I would better not speak for all Christians, I as a Christian say, Jesus bore the curse of my sin. The Jews treated Jesus as one they viewed as accursed or cursed, and they killed him. Because they felt he was false, he was not what they expected, but God in fact had in mind his death and his resurrection, and out of that curse, a blessing. Mr. D. Dad, if Christ showed the disciples that he hadn't died, that he did not die, why would they go forth preaching he had died and maintain this story of their own martyrdoms? If Christ showed the disciples that he hadn't died, why would they go forth preaching that he had died? I do not read into the scripture that they started preaching. You know, his immediate disciples that Christ had died. What they were telling is that he's alive, that he's alive, that he's alive. And it was an anticlimax to the idea that they had that the man was killed on the cross. That was their experience because they were not eyewitnesses or your witnesses of the happening. So now comes Jesus and he demonstrates to them that he's there. He's the very same Jesus that was before eating broiled fish and honeycomb and going and traveling with them, ever in hiding. So they said, no, the man is alive. We expected him to have died. He hadn't died. 
So that was the conviction that God saved him. And that is what they were preaching. This idea that he died for the sins of mankind, it doesn't seem to occur to me because this is against the law of God Almighty where he says the soul that sinneth it shall die. This is the law of God. That the one that sins, that, this, that is that soul shall die. And the son shall not be the iniquity of the father. Meaning whatever father Adam did and mother Eve did, he says the son will not be the iniquity, the sin of the father. Neither shall the son be the, the father be, the son be the iniquity of the father. He says the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. This is the law of God, that whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever evil thing the evil man does, he gets punished for it. But if the wicked will turn from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. This is the law of God for all eternity. He does not take an innocent man to pay for the guilty. This is against his justice. Doctor was talking about the justice of God, the mercy of God. I said, what kind of mercy and justice is this? That he can't punish the evil mongers, the sinners, so he takes his own son and he gets him crucified. Love, you call that love? Killing an innocent man, his own innocent son? Amazing, amazing type of reasoning, logic. The God of the Bible, as well as the Quran, the Bible says, Jesus, uh, in the book of Isaiah, said, I forgive sins for my own sake. And I will not rem remember your sins. In other words, once he forgives you, he's not asking you for blood of sheep or goat or lamb, nor of his son, but he says, I forgive sins for my own sake, and once I've forgiven, I don't remember it. It's all blotted out. This is the law of God in the Bible and the teaching of Jesus, where Jesus Christ, he says, he says, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. In other words, the way I carry my responsibility, you carry yours. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus says, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There's no heaven for you, Jesus says to his disciples, unless you are better than the Jew. And I'm asking, how can you be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments? Mr. Douglas, this one is for you. Christians claim that Jesus, peace be upon him, is God. My question is, did Jesus claim himself as the God? Did he say, I am God? Or did he ask his followers to worship me? One quick word to what uh, Dr. Didat was saying a moment ago about the disciples going forth and preaching uh, Jesus' death. According to the record in the Holy Book, they did. Uh, ten days after he ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit came, and the first time they preached, they said, Men of Israel, Jesus of Nazareth, a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, so on and so forth. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose. You, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. The very next time that they were up to speak, you handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. So very quickly they were in fact preaching that. They were right or they wrong. They were deceived or, or uh, something very strange had, had, gone on, had gone on. Did Jesus claim to be God? You mean in his very own words. If you're looking for the expression, I say that I am God. Just those words, you do not find it. But at the time of Jesus' trial, when he stood before the Jewish authorities, they said to him, tell us, are you the son of the blessed one? Now, who is the blessed one, Mary or God? And Jesus said, I am. And they said, what further need do we have for proof? He has blasphemed. Let him die. Blasphemy is taking 
to a human being that which you need.